The Buckler Time Domain Processor Model 288V is a 8-stage voltage control digital delay made by uh, Mark Verbos. Uh, it was originally designed by Don Buckler um, and the original 288 is very rare and as far as I know only a few units were ever made. Mark Verbos used the original schematics and redesigned the digital section, eliminating the obsolete shift registers. The amount of features on the 288V is so large that the amount of possibilities is exponential and um, it makes it difficult to explain, at least for me, no matter how clearly I see through it. Back in 2012 I tried to explain it, but the overwhelming amount of functions, settings, etc., mostly when loop mode is a part of the game, made it difficult for me to explain in a monologue on video. Though as a few people kept looking for infos about it, uh, I thought from time to time I should try again to explain it. Um, 288R was since then released, made by Roman Filipov, uh, but it very much differs from the original 288 or the 288V. Something more general, I recommended this a couple of times on forums, and I'm sorry if I repeat myself here, but when you start fresh with a module, no matter what module you're looking at, do start by reading the panel. Take a few minutes to read all markings, text, symbols, lines, visual controls. If the markings are well done, then they will give you a very important and clear information about the different functions and what the module is capable of. The 288V is 8-stage voltage control digital delay, a single analog to digital converter with a bank of 16 RAMs and 8 digital to analog converters. The digital to analog converters can be configured at any 8 points in the bank of RAMs. And the CAL mode here is digital to analog on every second RAM. The other three presets are configurable using wires on the PCB. Mark Verbos did set them up to be the 8 shortest times, the 8 longest times and the 4 short for long time. The delay time of each tab is the same and controlled by the delay multiplier section. This can be controlled by the knob at the right side, external voltage or FM by an audio signal. In pitch mode the delay time is being controlled by a rising or falling sawtooth wave. The other preset mixes A, B, C, D are set up by putting resistors into place on the PCB to have commonly used mixes easily available. Any output can be patched into the input mixer to get feedback, though it's best if the feedback does not have the dry signal in it. Bottom left we see the audio input mixer. You see three audio inputs, which means you can send three independent audio sources into the mixer. Notice that there is difference between input A and inputs B and C. Uh, a has a line connecting to a pot with a LED labeled auto control nearby. A is obviously not identical to B and C, and indeed, the audio input A has an envelope follower attached to it. The audio inputs B and C are not connected to the envelope follower, so the envelope follower will not react to input B or C. This LED shows when an audio signal overloads. Don't forget this module is very, very noisy, so take care of not exaggerating with the volume of the incoming signals. We saw there is an envelope follower on the leftmost audio input. A LED shows when the follower is sending out a pulse. The volume of A has nothing to do with the sense spot, which sets the threshold control of the envelope follower related to A. Even if we had the spot fully counterclockwise, the envelope follower would still react to the signal coming into A. We see that the line and arrow pointing to the sense spot is coming directly from the jack input, not from the volume port. It means that the signal at A could define, or let's say influence, what is happening with B and C signals if you are using loop mode. Depending on the position of all switches, the top left section with right function will act differently. Of course, what you will hear as a result will also depend on which output you choose and how the different switches are set on the panel. And this is when it starts for me to become complicated, so I'll try my best not to get lost here in explanations. Of course, the interest of this part of the module is to play with write and recirculate mode, loop mode. We have the possibility to do so via the envelope follower, the automation set via switches and the pulse input. Now comes the tricky part where I'll give my best to explain this part, the envelope follower part. I'm sending here a signal from my player and reverb, just a player, a bit looping. I'm in loop mode on my player. 
and I send it here. We have the amplitude control when it's that it's not overloaded. A being connected to the envelope follower allows me to play with the loop function, write and loop dynamically. I set the threshold according to the signal where I want it to react. It's a rhythm, so it's easier to get the threshold to have a peak which is high enough to engage an action. It's like a comparator here. I mean, it's an envelope follower and it sends a pulse to the right section, right, every time the threshold is reached. So if it's full on, it's always writing. Should be. Now I'm going to take. We hear now the direct output as control. I can take A for instance. Now it's always on right, I mean mostly right position. It means it's just going through a wall, a whole cycle of rams because short, middle and full only act when we are in loop mode. Loop mode would mean we're here. I mean, we're here. Here I'm on cycle mode here, left. Here would be preset mode, A, B or C. But this is not the matter here. I want to explain this and I, and I try my best. So, I set the threshold this way. Now, as I am in store end position and all sounds, every time it, get the, it sends a pulse, as soon as the pulse is sent, it goes back to, to loop. So you play like this. You see it's on loop. Every time it's led on, there is a pulse, it's on right. So, off it's on loop, on it's on right, okay? And this can be automated. This, of course, this process here, what I do with the, with the envelope follower, can be done playing with write and, res and recirculate, play playing with write and loop, so to say. You could do it via pulses, external pulses, to writing or looping. I don't explain the arm pulsing for now, because it's really bringing more confusion and again it's complicated. Now, this is when you are in store end position. Interesting also is when you are in begin position. What does it do? If the lead is on, the pulse is sent, but then it goes back, it goes to loop after a while. Not just when this is off, it doesn't go directly to loop. It just takes a while. And this while is just defined by the cycle. <clears throat> We're on short cycle, that's why it takes a very short cycle to go to loop mode. If I am on middle position, it will take more time. And if I am in full cycle, it goes through the full cycle of RAMs, then it takes the full cycle of RAM until it goes to loop. I hope it's clear. This mode here I'll try to explain. All what I did show till now was possible because I was on ready mode. And I was always work like this because it's enough, it brings already enough complexity in the delay mode or pitch mode. But I'm going to show you what it does. On ready we saw, depending if we're on store or on the store begin, it will depend. If we on store begin, it depends on the cycle. It's related to cycle when it goes back to loop. Here it's just related to the envelope floor. And again, <coughs> independently on top of it or 
just without envelope follower you could send a pulse here to right, send a pulse here to loop, huh? or both envelope follower plus pulses, it's possible. But then, if I'm on next sound, look what it does. It just go, it just make one cycle, it just take it to one loop, and then it stops because it has to be ready to write. So, you can make it ready by being on ready, but here it's always ready. Oh, you have here, I mean middle position, oh you have a momentary switch here, which makes it ready. Oops, ready. But then this ready, <laughs> why it doesn't work always? It's because you have to be synch synchronous with this. That's why I don't really use it. So it has to be off. You push it, now it's ready. And then as soon as there is a pulse, it's writing and it goes back and it's finished. You see? Ready? Tac. And this ready, ma made by hand, with a momentary switch here, I can do it via pulse too. What you also have I'm going to change the sample. So, what you also have, and I'm going to show it in another video as an example, I spoke about the possibility to send a pulse to right and a pulse to loop and also said it's possible to make a combination with envelope follow and pulses, it's possible. But you also have a pulse going out at the end of the right cycle here. So if let's say now tac, it would send a pulse every time it's just the end of right and here it's supposed to be the end of loop. It's supposed to send here a pulse as soon as it's the end of the loop. On mine it doesn't work. I did open, I did troubleshoot already this module so many times because of this part here that it doesn't bother me that it's not sending anything at the end of this pulse. So I let it like this for now. Now I'd like to give you an idea of how complex this delay can become thanks to a combination of loop cycles of the RAM, presets, panel mix, preset mixes, not to forget that on top you can double the delay time and control the delay time between each tap, playing with delay speed manually via potentiometer or via CV. The delay can also be affirmed via an incoming audio signal. Again, the choice of possibilities is huge. This part with output mixer and panel mix is an important part of the module. It allows you to mix different delay taps with the original signal, but first we'll have a look at the single direct outputs on the top, called CAL. We saw earlier that we have 16 chips of dynamic RAM for 8 stages of delay, and we have a digital to analog converter on every second RAM. So 0 is the original signal, 20 is the second RAM, 40 is the fourth, etc. etc. So you can pick here directly the signal from each output. These nine audio outputs are aligned to the nine sliders below, but there is an horizontal line in between, which means that sliders and switches are not acting on these direct outputs. Instead, here you can set the volume of the original incoming signal, as well as each delay tap or delay stage, and mix them together. You can also mute the signal, or invert its phase via a switch with three positions. One position for positive phase, one position for negative phase, and one position for muting the signal. If we follow the arrow, it shows us here the outputs of this mix. They have no markings, it means they are two identical panel mix outputs. Then we have also four independent preset mix outputs, A, B, C, D. We saw that these are unrelated to the output mixer, where we were able to set the individual stages by hand. Instead, here we have pre-configured presets, and they are mixes of different delay stages which were set via the circuit on the module, depending on where dedicated resistors were placed on the board. So Mark used to set them as A, fading out as the times get longer, B, fading up as the times get longer, C rising to the middle time and then down again, and D is all up. I tried to um, 
to illustrate the way the, the delay is working. So here I am inputting an audio signal. Here is the original signal here coming in. And then it goes through 16 RAM chips from the first to the second, etc. And we have a certain delay which is the same between all spaces here. So if you enter an, an audio input here, you have the original signal here, let's say, to illustrate. And then if it enters RAM 1, it will be like, if, if we hear the original do it, like ah, ah, for instance. If it goes to the second one, you would hear ah, ah, a small delay here. Third, ah, ah, fourth, ah, ah, etc. And when you go to the 16th, when the sound enters the 16th RAM, then it, and compared to the original, then there is a long delay until it arrives at 16. I hope it's clear. Then, what the cull does, these outputs on top, they pick every second RAM. And we also have the original direct out on zero. We have the second RAM direct out, no volume control, nothing, or amplitude on uh, 20, on 40. So what it does on CAL, you have these outputs here on CAL, these delay outputs that you can pick directly. Now, if we look at the panel mix, we saw that we have sliders and also switches, which allow us to control each delay tap, the amplitude, the volume, and the phase. And all these eight delay taps plus the original signal at zero, we can have them mixed at the panel mix output. Of course, it's, it's uh, digital to analog converted, but this is not the matter here. Now we look at the presets A, B and C. We remember that these presets are defined by the way uh, we soldered some wires in the back of the PCB. When Mark Verbo says it is set via wires on the PCB, A as being the eight shortest times and B the eight longest times and C four short, four long, I interpret it like A is a mix of the first eight RAM outputs sent to the eight digital to analog converters, then B the last eight RAM and C the first four followed by the last four. You remember that these ABC presets activated via switches are affecting the panel mix output and might affect also ABCD preset mix outputs. So now I'll show the different outputs. If I take my signal here and take the output here, it's a direct out from A. Direct. Doesn't matter what I do here, here, whatever. Okay, if I take this one, it's just a second RAM. So if you want to hear it, here is the original. Here is a tap. I'll try now to show you again the complexity of the delays. Here is the original signal coming in. I can monitor it because I take the panel mix out and direct out here. I have volume here so I don't go here directly for the demo now. I can't show you all possibilities, but to take an example, I'll take A. So you see the difference with the original. You see how complex it is already. 
which is getting complex because I'm using the envelope for Aura, which goes on loop mode. As soon as it's in loop mode, the cycles are acting. And no matter if I'm here or here, no, not no matter. If I'm here, then what we hear as soon as it's in loop mode as a cycle, a very short cycle. Middle. Long. Half of the RAM, full RAM. So, because I'm here, but what is possible? And this is where it goes very complex. It's you can go on preset means now you are the output also depends on A, B or C. But as soon as it's in loop mode, it also depends on the cycles. Let's do it. And here I'm only showing this combination. If you take another output here, it's different. If you take panel mix, it's different. If you mix the outputs, even if you take direct outs, etc., guys, you see it can go. And I'm still here on X1 normal speed and mostly the original speed, the same speed as the original signal. And I didn't use these, but you imagine if you use these two. So you see, yeah, it's, yeah. So I stay here. It's, it's. I don't make it more complex. So I said you could go on panel mix, have the different tabs at the output. But then again, it also depends what you have here. I hope it gives an idea. Uh, again, I didn't use these. <laughs> I take a bit because you see the it's not to be musical of course you noticed in my opinion you hear very well where it's delaying when when it's a beat could be different of course but this is the way I I do it <laughs> to demonstrate I hope it's okay again I only use a and panel mix now at the end but 
you could mix this, this signal, play with speed, uh, with FM in, I've delay multiplier with the audio signal here, or the CV in to change the speed on the fly. Um, yeah. <laughs> And if there is a loop you like, you just put the threshold out here and you stay on it as long as you want. And again, you can, via, via whatever gate, you can just send a right. I'm going to take the pendulum ratchet. <laughs> A delay multiplier. Bottom right, we have the delay multiplier section. In delay mode, it allows to control the delay time between taps. You can consider it as a speed control. It can be controlled either manually by a CV and it's an attenuator, as we see here. It can also be affirmed by an audio signal. You also will notice the X1, X2 switch in X2's delay is doubled. The pitch mode is quite special. I, let's say I never use it. When it's on pitch mode, the voltage controlling the delay time is replaced by the sawtooth LFO. The speed of this LFO can be controlled via incoming CV or manually. Yeah. The LFO only oscillates while the LED above auto control is on. The speed potentiometer can only make the pitch shift down and with an external CV the pitch can go up. It makes a change in pitch because it is changing the delay time between the sampling and the playback. The LFO has to reset at some point and there will be an audible glitch. The sense knob controls the threshold of the envelope follower that resets that saw wave. If the sense knob is set just right, it will reset at the beginning of notes and not sound awful. Be aware that this mode only works when chaos is what you're looking for. Remember, remember that this here, the volume is independent from the envelope follower because remember it's the envelope follower is connected directly to the input. So even if the volume here was at zero, the envelope follower will still work. So if you had a loop here, for instance, or something else, but the envelope follower controlling the right loop function would work, no matter if the, no matter if the signal is fade it out. And if you had a signal in B, I'm going to take this for instance, oscillator, then it would write and, and loop it of course. Same with C. Huh?
I have a pulse output on my player, Kazako player, which should suppose every time this sample is looping. End of the loop on my sample player, on my player, Kazako player. Wow. Etc. Etc. Huh? <laughs> I'm gonna stop because I can't make it endlessly. So it's just to show a few. And the original signal was this. Oops, was this. Oh, I nearly forgot to mention. If you take a stage here and send it to, to as feedback. Not bad, huh? Okay. Ha 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 